Why is this house upside down? And what do these balloons have to do with Sears kit houses and life 100 years ago? Well, stick around and I'll tell you all about it. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you what balloons have to do with Sears kit houses. Sears kit houses used a framing method called the balloon method of framing, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Sears was an innovator in many ways, and many of the innovations that they first came out with, we still use in our everyday lives. Sears was the first ones to have a catalog. They were the Amazon of its day. They were selling everything through their catalog, including houses. You could buy a kit house. The house would be shipped to you by rail in 30,000 pieces and 70 pages of instructions, and the customers would put the houses together themselves which took about three months. Today is going to be a really interesting day because I'm going to be talking about the balloon method of framing houses along with some other methods of framing houses that they were doing back in the day. But also today, I'm going to be starting to build the first wall of the 112 scale miniature Sears kit house. So you're actually going to get a chance to see what this would have looked like. So let's have a look. Sears kit houses were built using a method called balloon framing, similar to how we build houses in America today. So before we look at balloon framing, let's have a look at a couple of other house building methods. In North America, the first settlers usually built a one room structure made of logs, field stones, spruce poles, or even prairie sod. Sod houses were built on the Great Plains in the United States and Canada during the 1800s and as late as the 1900s. When there weren't too many trees or stones around, the grass sod could be used to build shelters, corrals, and fences. In Europe, they were using the timber frame building method. The frame or skeleton support is built first, and the walls, usually stucco or stone, are usually then added with the supporting beams exposed. The beams are often connected using various types of joints and dowels. We think of these buildings as Tudor style, like this house in England. Say, do you recognize this house? If you know who is born in this famous house, let us know in the comments. Let's move on back to America. Pre-cut lumber wasn't always easy to come by, so logs were common building materials. Log buildings, houses, barns, and so on were common. Notice the notches used to hold the logs together. Here, let's zoom in a bit. With railways, it became easier to move freight such as lumber. With the railway, Sears was able to ship pre-cut lumber long distances. Frame houses such as Sears kit houses or brick houses with multiple rooms, second stories, glass windows and shingled roofs, signaled the end of pioneering. This is why most Sears kit houses were built in close proximity to a railway line. Sears introduced balloon framing. They called it balloon framing because when they were building the house, it looked like it would float away, just, just like a balloon. This type of framing is very similar to platform framing, which we use commonly today. The main difference is that the wood studs were often the height of the house. In this photo, you can see the top plate or upper wall plate, the double beams running across the top would form a fire barrier. Above this would be the floor beams or the second floor. This type of building is used today instead of balloon framing because if there was a fire within the walls, the top plate acts as a fire break. The balloon method of construction or platform construction we use today was an innovation that made building houses much less expensive. You no longer needed highly skilled craftsmen to cut the notches in the wood as you did with timber frame construction. With highly skilled architects designing the houses and compiling lists of building materials required to build the house, and a large central factor with state-of-the-art machinery, the wood could be pre-cut perfectly and numbered. And with the use of nails, of course, another building innovation, the average person was now able to assemble their own house, just like we assemble IKEA furniture today. The smaller boards were easier to handle and anyone can nail boards together. No need for highly skilled tradespeople to cut the notches and joints needed to hold the large timbers together. It was said a Sears kit house could be fully assembled in just three months. With these and other innovations, Sears turned the building industry upside down. Hey, if you're enjoying my videos, it would be greatly appreciated if you could like and subscribe. As a small YouTuber, it really makes my day when I see someone actually liked one of my videos. So I just wanted to say thanks. And if you've already subscribed to my channel, I just wanted to let you know, I think you're awesome. So let's get started with building the balloon frame walls of our 112 scale model Sears Kit House Miniature.
I just wanted to let you know what's coming up in the next video. In the next video, I'm going to be working on that wall as well as the other wall that faces the porch. If you enjoyed this video, also check out this video as well. And also, in the next video, I'm going to have some more stories of what life was like 100 years ago. We'll see you in the next video.